Hi there. If you're watching this video, I assume you're here because you want to use TP-Link TLWM722N wireless card adapter for Wi-Fi penetration tests. Also, you might found by now that if you don't have the first version of this adapter, you will not be able to put it in the monitor mode, due to the fact that after version 1, TP-Link changed the chipset to one that doesn't support this mode. Well, it does, but not without doing a few tricks that I'm going to show you in the following minutes. Before we get there, let's talk a little bit about TP-Link TLWN722N version 1 and the subsequent version. Why choose this Wi-Fi adapter instead of others? Well, the most important reason is the price. For example, I spent on mine around 12 bucks, shipping included, while one of the more performant adapters, like an alpha adapter, goes up to 70 or 80 US dollars. Due to this price difference, TP-Link is the best option for a beginner who does his first steps in the Wi-Fi penetration testing. It's not that expensive and is good enough for you to learn the basics. The downside is that it supports only the 2.4 GHz channel without offering you the possibility to reach the 5 GHz channel. Another inconvenient is that after version 1, which was equipped with the Atheros AR9271 chipset that can easily support the monitor mode, the new models have a Realtek RTL8188 chipset, which in theory at least cannot support the monitor mode. Nevertheless, this is why we are here today, to show you that this last disadvantage is actually just a myth. But enough chit chat, let's move to the practical part of our video. We will start with the first step, connecting your Wi-Fi adapter to your Kali Linux virtual machine. For this, you need to insert your adapter in one of your USB ports. Once this is done, go to Player, Removable Devices, and in the drop-down menu you should find your adapter. Select it and click on Connect. If everything is OK, once you click on the Network Manager icon on the top right side, here, you should automatically connect to your own Wi-Fi network, if you have one, of course, and see the Connection Established pop-up, this one. Next, we will try to find out what chipset we have on our adapter. In order to see what chipset we have on our adapter, we will use this command, lsusb, enter. As you can see here, we don't have the Atheros chipset, we have the Realtek RTL8188. So we can already anticipate the problems with setting it in monitor mode. Now let's see how we activate the monitor mode for our Realtek RTL8188 chipset. First, make sure you are logged in with the root user, or if you're not, use sudo in front of each command that I'm going to show you below. We will start with updating our Kali Linux system. For this, we are going to use the following commands. First command that we are going to use is apt update. This command is used to update the sources list with the latest versions of the packages in the repositories. Package sources list contains the locations or URLs of some of the repositories from which a package is installed. So whenever we type in apt update, it browses this list from the repositories and copies the latest versions of them to the local system. But in fact, it doesn't install any package on the local machine. For this, we are going to use another command, which is apt upgrade. This one compares the version of all packages currently installed on the system with the ones in the list we fetched through apt update and upgrades all of them to their latest version. Now, depending how much time has passed since you've done this or how fast your internet connection is, this action might take 3 minutes, 30 minutes or 3 hours. So, uh, I recommend you to pause this video and come back once you have your upgrade done. 
After the upgrade, make sure you reboot your virtual machine by running command reboot now. But before doing that, I have a small favor to ask from your side. Since there is a lot of work put in creating this video or other ethical hacking related videos uh, on my channel, it would be a great help for me if you would like to subscribe to my channel. Thank you. This is really important for me and I really appreciate it. Once the upgrade is completed and the reboot is done, we are going to install the BC package. The BC package usually gets installed pretty fast, so I'm not going to pause the video and I'm just going to wait for it to be installed. Done, as you can see, and as I said, it went pretty fast. Next package is called build essential and we are going to use this command to install it. Should go fast as well, yes, done. Next package is called libelf-dev. Done already, good. Next package is called dkms. Again, should install pretty fast. And now we must make sure that all drivers from this machine are removed. As you can see, I had no driver previously installed, but nevertheless, you should run this command to make sure you don't have drivers for this adapter already installed. Good. Next command is this. This one might take a few seconds, but again, should not be very long. Again, it depends a lot on your internet connection speed. And done. Good. Now we need to reboot again our machine. I will be back once the reboot is done. Once the reboot is done, we are moving on with another package that needs to be installed. This one and it's done. Okay, I know I'm going a little bit fast through all these commands, but this is because I am trying to create a video that is short and informative. Nevertheless, I will put all these commands in the description of this video so you can easily copy paste them in your terminal. Now, let's move on. Uh, as a next step, we will have to clone a GitHub repository. And I will do it right now. Okay, this is the command git clone and paste the link that you want to to use. Once this is done, go into the new, newly created folder and then run this uh, blacklist, this command that blacklist the, the chipset. One second, this is the command. As you can see here, you have blacklist uh, R8188. Now we need another reboot. We are back again. Now let's switch to the folder that was created after we cloned the GitHub repository. And once in this folder, we are going to run this command. What this command does is to actually install the driver that we are going to need for our uh, Pepe Link adapter. Once this command is, is done, we will have to reboot again the virtual machine. I know it's a lot, but this is the process. And after the machine has been rebooted, we can try to put our adapter in monitor mode. So we are pretty close to the end. So bear with me just for a few more minutes and then we are done.
good the installation is done we can move on but before we do that let me talk a little bit about the warning that is treated as an error as you can see here this is a warning even if it's shown as an error if you get something similar don't worry just move on and try to execute the next steps if something doesn't work then return and try to to run this command again but as you see here this is a warning i'm going to reboot now and once we are back we are going to put our adapter into monitor mode now the last thing left to be done is to actually put the adapter in monitor mode for this we need to make sure that we don't have uh, any process running so we're going to use this check kill command to make sure we kill all processes for me it found one process if it doesn't find anything it's okay let's move on with the next command which is ip link uh, set here we put the interface name down And now we are going to set the mode to monitor with IV dev interface name set type monitor. To check that the monitor mode has been activated, we can use the IV config command. And if you look closely here, we have monitor mode on. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching and let me know if something is not working for you as expected write me in the comments and i'll try to reply as fast as i can thanks for watching once again bye